Harry Carey with Steve Stone. Ron Sando on the booth with us for a moment. Boy, the coach came in, Harry. I haven't seen him this happy in, in weeks. He Here's, was ecstatic today. Here's the first pitch. Mark Grace, who's two for three. Yesterday, he was three out of five. Swings, fouls him back. Rick Sutcliffe in the booth next to us. And when I mentioned that he was, he got a wonderful ovation from this big crowd. There he is right there. Sure looks different with a coat. Now, coat's not on now, but he does, was wearing it. He's got his tie on. I guess when you go on the network, you got to be dressed up, huh? <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Grace, what a year he's having. Strong, and one of the few times that he strikes out, he just did. And here's Sammy. Sean Burton on the mound. For the Padres. We're in the bottom of the seventh. One ball, no strikes. Tatis continues to warm up in the bullpen. Bay is hit. Uh, he may still get a double. He now has, for the day, two singles, a three-run triple, and a homer. And a sacrifice fly. But he didn't drive any runs with that one, Harry, so he's <laughs> slumping. But he still could get another time at bat in the eighth. 15 to 5 in favor of the Cubs. Boy, Sammy. And everything he has hit, even his sacrifice fly, well hit. The home run in spite of Arnie Harris's mistaken measurement. Oh, just a gross underestimation is what he, it is. He, he, uh, he says it only went 435 feet. It went way past that house with the Budweiser sign on top of it. So it had to go 500 feet. Two balls, no strikes. There's Sammy. A high pop fly, my drop, my drop, my drop, my drop. Nice play by Shumpert. Gonna go for the double play, but he's safe. Hanson. Looped a short pop fly, and Terry Shumpert made a fine play to grab it. Good effort by Shumpert, who started the game. It's shortstop, and we'll watch it again. Shumpert comes on, and he made the catch. Yes, indeed. It was a nice Good catch. Good play. So two men are out. Sammy's at first. And here's Hernandez. Getting a chance to start the ball game. He's two out of four. Started the big eight run inning in the third with a base hit. Sammy is safe lead at first. Bottom of the seventh. High outside, ball two. You think we'll take over the league in hitting after today? I think we'll be a little short of that, but certainly the batting average will rise dramatically. Now the pitch. A little bit inside. Three balls, no strikes. On Jose Hernandez. He's two out of four today. They'll probably turn them loose. Three balls, no strikes. Strike in there, curveball. 
Fernando Valenzuela. Valenzuela. Expect a rating a little bit. Three balls and the strike. There's a high fly ball deep center field going back. Finley at the warning track. Boy, that for Hernandez hit that ball well. So, at the end of seven, it remains and comes 15, the Padres five. Five Hour Energy helps you get stuff done. And now, when you purchase Five Hour Energy, you can instantly win cash prizes. For complete rules and how to enter, visit 5hewin.com. Five Hour Energy, the official sponsor of getting stuff done. Do you have concerns about mild memory loss related to aging? Prevagen is the number one pharmacist recommended memory support brand. You can find it in the vitamin aisle in stores everywhere. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. I could hear the thunder. I knew I knew that we were getting a storm, but just suddenly the hail started coming down. It literally sounds like rocks are hitting the side of your house. When I talked to Hippo, my first call, I felt immediately like they cared about my home like they cared about their own home. They were really concerned about every detail, down to did my grill have a dent in it? I had a lot of questions about how the process would go. They um, spoke my language. They didn't talk a bunch of insurance speak. Once I talked to Hippo, I felt a lot better. They made me feel that they were on top of it. You've been really busy lately, so we think you deserve to do something that's just for you. Look what just arrived! <gasps> it's so beautiful. Love this bag. Oh my God. This is self-care in a box. Oh yeah! This is perfect for fall. Treat yourself to a box today. Go to FabFitFun.com. Use code BESTDAY for $10 off your first box. Harry Carey and Steve Stone, Scott's service has shifted from catching to first base. And uh, Hubbard is behind the plate, Mike Hubbard. And Ramon Tatis is the new pitcher. And Foster will be the winning pitcher. Today. And Tatis on for the 10th time, an ERA and even three. Kevin Foster went seven innings, gave up five runs, only three of them earned. On seven hits, he fanned five and didn't walk anybody in a good performance by Kevin Foster. And he'll be the winningest pitcher on the staff. Not saw, or rather, uh, Mulholland. I was thinking of Joe Nuxall, and who broadcast from Marty Brenneman, Tom's father in Cincinnati. Youngest player ever to pitch in a ma major league game. is only 16 when he broke in for Cincinnati. But Mulholland will pitch for the Cubs tomorrow. He'll be going for his fourth victory, something that Kevin Foster will have accomplished today. And the ball is sharp. Sanchez throws him out. Well, Kevin has to be pretty happy with his performance today, quite obviously, given a big lead by his team, but. More important, he did get the ball over the plate. When you have a big lead, you want to avoid walking people, and Kevin was able to do just that. 25,036 25, here today. And John, the Giants will be here in the morning night. And John Flaherty is going to pinch hit. Takes a strike call. One man out. Here's the pitch a little bit low. The outfield bunching Flaherty towards center. Three home runs, 14 RBIs. Good cut, but he missed. Tomorrow's game starts at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Here are the pitches. Mark Gardner from the Giants. And Amari Talamanco goes for the Cubs. 
There's a pitch foul on a play. Cubs will be going for their third win in a row, which will be the first time they would be able to do that. And they could make this quite a homestand with a very good series against the Giants. Flaherty batting for Bergman. The pitch two and two. One man out, nobody on. There's Jim Riggleman, the manager of the Cubs. He doesn't look any different than he always looked. He's a very composed young man. Here's the pitch a little bit low. And that's something good to say about a manager. Some are always squawking, screaming, complaining, whining. Ball four, Flaherty walk. Riegelman knows his job is to get the most he can out of the 25 player at his disposal. And that's what he tries to do. Here's Chris Jones. Nothing out of three. We're in the top of the eighth. One out, one on. Pitch a little bit high. Well, I have to go over to Coke Dior tonight and the Drake and see Buddy Charles. My first request will be, where's that, where's that sheet of music? Somebody done somebody wrong song. Two balls, no strikes. Look at that. What happened to your pretty hats, Arnie? Here's the foul ball. Look at that one. That's not so pretty either, and I'm colorblind. <laughs> Is that your son there? Oh, yeah, they're still watching the game. With the cup head on. Look out. Three balls and the strike. This game started at 220. Considering all the hitting done by the Cubs, not too weak. There's a long drive. It looks foul. It is foul. Out onto Waveland Avenue. <laughs> that, hey, that means the Cubs win the pennant in 2000. Yeah. Three balls, two strikes. Bouncing ball up the middle. Nice play by Hernandez for the fourth out. Boy, the more you see Jose in there, the better you like him. Another good play. I think Chris Jones was surprised that this wasn't a base hit. There was no chance for any play at first. But Jose Hernandez going up the middle. The fourth out to Sanchez. And that's all they could get. Let me ask you this. What pitcher do you think has worked the most shutouts in the National League this year? By himself? Yeah. <laughs> Does it make a good Nissan question? No. How about Pedro Martinez? No. I, you know if I ask this question, it's somebody you wouldn't think of. <laughs> okay. Roger Bailey for Colorado. Two shutouts, personally, individually, no other participation. <laughs> Are you surprised? Well, I remember he had a very good run at it. Oh, and two to the count. Arquis Cianfranco takes the pitch low and inside. Now I know why these, uh, all these statistics are good to have. 
to play Nissan trivia questions with. Two men around. A high drive. Way back. Right field corner. And the catch is made. A fan tried to catch the ball, but Sammy Sosa made a one-handed catch in foul territory to retire the side. Just to let me down, let, let me, me down. down, and mess me around. And the worst of all, if you ride, you get it. Geico Motorcycle 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Here's Sanchez. One out of three today. We're in the bottom of the eighth. Joey Long comes in to finish it up. Here's the pitch swung and missed. Joey Long, a left-hander. On for the eighth time, an ERA of 1080. Here's the highest ERAs, and Joey is third. Pitch is high outside. Two outs, two strikes. A night game tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Barry Bonds and the Giants will be here. There's a high foul ball out of play. Two and two. I guess Mo Holland will pitch the Sunday game. Sunday, it'll be Terry Mulholland and Sean Estes, a battle of yeah, left-handers. Left right. And Mark Gardner and Amari Telemaco tomorrow night. There's the pitch a little bit low. In the, C in the series finale, on Monday, it'll be Steve Praxel against Osvaldo Fernandez. And the Giants lead the West. Three balls, two strikes. I foul out of play. You know, I got a feeling that Telemaco is a very important start for him because they got to make room for one of these guys, Gonzalez, Jeremy Gonzalez, or Terry Woods. Here's a line drive right to the right fielder. Sanchez lined hard. And uh, you've got to have a, a set rotation of starting pitchers. And if you, gotta, if you think you're going to make up ground, you've got to have starting pitchers that have a chance to win. And who's a, a talent would impress you as having a chance to win. This is also a critical game as far as the Cubs are concerned. They'd love to have a three-game winning streak. Here is a base hit by Service on his way to second base. Scott service with a lot of people from Wisconsin in over the weekend to see him play double to right center. And Scott service is a triple shy of the cycle today. So a big day for service, a huge day for Sosa. And this one getting by Steve Finley. He's taking the wrong angle on a few fly balls in this series. So Steve just coming back off the disabled list. And the Scott service fan club. Boy, oh boy, 20 hits today, good for 15 runs. Two doubles, two homers, one triple, and the rest single. Mike Hubbard will replace service behind the plate with service shifting over to play first base. A little bit low. Hubbard has had a homer hitting 111. 
has spent most of his time with Iowa before coming up a week ago. Finished up with the Cubs last year. Good prospect. Line drive, right field. It's going to be caught. Two men are gone. And in games of note, as far as the Cubs are concerned, Houston at Philadelphia tonight. St. Louis, a tough assignment at Atlanta. And the Pittsburgh Pirates entertaining the tough Florida Marlins. He's got three hits today. Pitch is high. Stay tuned after the game for the GMC game highlights that Josh Lewin will have for you. There's uh, Kevin Foster's tossing that ball up in the air. One ball, one strike. Almost hit him. Boy, uh, McRae's had a great series. He's had seven hits in the three games. Two out of five, two out of five, and three out of four so far today. Bounds in front of the plate, a wild pitch. And service advances the third. That one bounced well in front of the plate. No chance for Don Slot. It's about a 53-foot fastball. Three <laughs> balls and the strike. That one just barely exceeded the grass. Boy, unfortunately, there's two out. McRae, Glanville, Grace, before you get to Sosa. He swings and he misses. I'd like to see Sammy have a chance at that Cub record of nine, B, uh, nine RBIs by an individual player in the game. Three balls, two strikes. Bouncing ball, base hit down the left field line. Another run is in. A double for McRae. McRae, who's a, according to average, is a much better hitter, right-handed than left-handed, just double to left, driving in another run. RBI number 13 on the fourth hit of the day for Brian McRae. And a walk to that. And he's had quite a day along with Sammy Sosa. Some gaudy offensive numbers for the Cubs today from the left field camera. We'll take a look at one right down the line by a diving RKC and Franco. And so it is 16 to 5 now on 21 hits, 16 runs. Here's Granville. A little bit outside. Ramon Tatis is the next next hitter. Well, not likely, therefore, that Sammy will get a chance to bat one more time in this ball game. We're in the bottom of the eighth. A little bit inside. McRae, four out of five. Sosa. Four out of four. Grace. Two balls and the strike. Ground ball to Sharp. Over the first to retire the side. One run on two hits. One left. At the end of eight, the Cubs are leaving 16 to five. Menards is your bathroom remodel destination. U-Tile from Max gives you the realistic look and feel of tile and installs in half the time. This Halo shower is $1,879.99. Complete your shower with a new shower head from Waterpick. This Power Pulse magnetic slide bar shower head easily adjusts to the height of everyone in your home. Available in brushed nickel finish, it's only $79.99 now during Menards Race to Savings Sale. Save big money at Menards. Thank you. 
Harry Carey and Steve Stone back at Rigby Field. We're going to the top of the ninth. The way I figured quickly, the Cubs have had No, that don't add up right. I think they've had three doubles, one triple, two homers. That would that would leave 15 singles, right? Well, there's 21 hits. Well, that adds up. <laughs> Whoa. 15 singles, three doubles, one triple, and two home runs. Here's a high pop fly, should be caught. Hernandez is there to grab it. Gomez pops out to Hernandez, one away. You know, that guy has been here since uh, a week ago. And I don't think he. I think he shaved then a week ago, and he still hasn't shaved. Nobody would believe, Arnie, that he shaved this morning. <laughs> they might believe he didn't shave for a week, though. Remember tomorrow night, a rare Saturday night game. Barry Bonds and the Giants, who lead the Western Division. There's a ground ball down the first baseline. A base hit. Carlos Hernandez. Single to right. Boy, Bruce Bocci. It's been a long day for him. Not only a long day, Harry, but since a four and one start, the Padres will be 10 and 23. And certainly injuries have played a big part in that. But his team's just really struggling and middle relief has been difficult. And Joey Hamilton hasn't been available. He's one of their most dependable starters. And now with Andy Ashby having a tender elbow, it's been a rough go for the Padres. Don Slott flat out his only other time up today. Veteran receiver of 16 years duration. I think the Cubs, Harry, would have a hard time working up sympathy, though, as far as the Padres are concerned <laughs> after what's happened this year. The Cubs have their concerted efforts now to catch St. Louis. Three balls, no strikes. A little bit low and outside. Slot gets a base on ball. Oh boy. Look like anybody you know? Gosh. Oh, I, I doesn't even resemble me. Don't you guys you guys are just trying to hurt me all day long. Who who draws those characters? <laughs> Did you Steve? Yeah, but uh, Harry, I would never show it. Arnie's honing in on it about every inning, you know. <laughs> One out. Look. Over the outside corner. Josh shall have the 10th inning show following the ball game. Line drive, base hit by Finley. Here's a run going to score. Another man going to third. So Finley gets his third hit of the day. He's three out of five. And Finley's now driven in 16 runs for the year. But the Padres refuse to go quietly. As they've got a couple of hits and a walk. And a couple of singles and a home run for Steve Finley. And so now it's 16 to six. And here is. Terry Shumper. Shumper, who started the game playing second and then moved out to left field and made an outstanding catch. On one the count.
There's a high fly ball. Glanville under it near the warning track. A run scores after the catch. An RBI for Schumpert, which is his first of the year. And Finley has scored. And it's 16 to 7. The crowd on his feet. Here's Veras, the second baseman. Came into the game late. This should be it. Up with it from Hernandez to Sanchez. And the Cubs win. The Cubs win by the score of 16 to 7. And there is Kevin Foster from Evanston. Now leading the pitching staffs in total victory. He's the only one who has as many as four. 21 hits for the Cubs, 16 runs. And here's Sammy with four out of four. What a day he had with uh, six RBI. A triple, a couple of singles, a homer. A tremendous season. Some housekeeping from this one. When he would go two for three with an RBI on his way to a 372 average, a fourth consecutive batting title, and his fifth straight season above 350. As for Sammy Sosa, well, he hit 36 home runs in 1997, but over the next five years, he would smash 292, the most ever over a five year span in Major League Baseball history. This has been Cubs Classics Black History Month edition, and for the whole team at Marquee Sports Network, I'm Cole Wright. We'll see you next time. Just back from hitching a ride with the Mandalorian, it's Off the Mound with Ryan Dempster. Presented by Sloan. Featuring guest, this former UCLA Bruin played 10 big league seasons, winning a World Series as a player with the 04 Red Sox, and then guiding the Dodgers to last year's World Series. A former manager of the year and pride of Rancho High, Dave Roberts. And now, here's the host of Off the Mound, Ryan Dempster. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Off the Mound, presented by Sloan. I'm Ryan Dempster. Pleasure to be with you again every Friday, as we are. Um, we're thrilled this month as we celebrate Black History Month and the Black History of the Game. And with that, we are super honored tonight to have the manager from the World Series champion, Los Angeles Dodgers, Dave Roberts, is going to be stopping by the show. Um, Dave, of course, making history as only the second ever black manager and first ever Asian manager, Japanese born, uh, to win the World Series as manager. Incredible, incredible stuff. Uh, going to catch up with him about uh, the past season, uh, his career, moments in his career, him and I's matchup together. Always not the friendliest, but uh, a lot of laughs along the way. So thrilled to have him stop by. Well, here we are um, a week away from spring training, getting ready to start. Uh, two weeks from full teams being born and ready to go. And uh, it's that time again. It's exciting. Uh, when we thought we weren't even going to have a season last year, and then boom, uh, we did. And now we're here we are uh, with the anticipation of playing a full 162. So let's cross our fingers and hope that happens. Um, to me, spring training was probably as much fun as you were going to ever have during the season. It was a lot more relaxed. Um, the interactions with the fans, uh, you know, the, the field and ground balls in the backfield, the taking batting practice, uh, you know, on field five uh, with your buddies, um, to the early morning workouts, to the dinners and the, and the team camaraderie, the things that you would do to bond together and start, um, you know, generating that trust and those relationships with that current team that you were going to be on that season, um, all the while building towards winning a championship. Um, we're always so special. But not just that. No, there were moments where um, you learned a lot. Um, you know, you had this, this surprise. Who was going to show up out of nowhere and make a ball club that you least suspected? Um, that happens every spring training. We don't know who it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be somebody, and they're going to make an impact in a big way out in the field. Um, there's going to be moments, teaching moments, things that can happen. Um, for me personally, spring training of 2005 
uh, on the backfield, I've told this story many a times, uh, getting ready to throw a bullpen and trying to figure out a changeup. My whole career, I struggled with it. How do I throw a changeup? Well, you know what you do? You ask a Hall of Famer, that's what you do. Uh, Fergie Jenkins was on the backfield. He was down there for some special assistant work, just uh, helping out, um, trying to give some knowledge. And boy, did he give me knowledge that really changed the trajectory of my career. That's right. He said, Ryan, just go ahead and grab the ball like this, split your fingers apart it, put the ball in there, put your thumb up on the side, and there you go. How about a little bit of a split change up? Well, I go to the backfield to throw a bullpen. Larry Rothschild's back there. I give the catcher one of these, a little change up sign, and boom, bottom falls out of it. And Larry looks at me, he's like, what is that? And I said, I don't know, it's a change up. Fergie just showed me a grip. I said, try it. He said, well, throw it again. I threw it again, bottom fell out of it. And Larry looked at me and said, all right, we found you a changeup. That's what we're gonna go with. And the rest is history. It really changed my career. Um, it altered my ability to get left-handed hitters out for the first time, really. Um, so special, special moments that you least suspect happening um, can take place at any point during spring training. Um, and, and they really can change somebody's career. So I look forward to spring training. It's always a great time. Everybody's tied for first place. Everybody's excited to have the best year of their career. Um, the smell of the grass and, uh, you know, just ball games being played again, the crack of the bat, all that stuff, those great sounds, those great smells of baseball and a new championship season uh, being birthed. So uh, we're so excited for that to happen and we're very, very excited for the manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers, Dave Roberts, going to be stopping by. We take this short little break and we'll be back with Off the Mound right after this. Join us each week for the Off the Mound with Ryan Dempster podcast presented by Sloan. Don't miss the in-depth conversations with some of the biggest names in baseball, plus celebrities, musicians, and more. You think you know uh, what a manager uh, goes through as a player, but you have no idea until you actually go through some of those conversations or decisions and the kind of ups and downs of the season. Download and subscribe to the Off the Mound with Ryan Dempster podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and it's all presented by our good friends at Sloan. Great day on the lake. It is. Lunch is cooking. And I saved a bunch of money on my boat insurance with Geico. Oh, yeah? Fellas, can it get any better than this? <laughs> Whoa. My old hairstyle grew back. <gasps> so did mine. What? I was an 80s kid. It only gets better when you switch and save with Geico. Five Hour Energy helps you get stuff done. And now, when you purchase Five Hour Energy, you can instantly win cash prizes. For complete rules and how to enter, visit 5hewin.com. Five Hour Energy, the official sponsor of getting stuff done. Catch top stars at the first Grand Slam tournament of the year, the Australian Open on Tennis Channel. Watch the battle to come out on top, down under. The Australian Open, live daily on Tennis Channel. Check your local listings. Your family will fall in love with the Croods, a new age. Let's do it. This is amazing. What do we do? What do we say to each other? What's happening to our voices? Where are our voices going to be? It's perfect family fun. See that wall? Want to jump it? Yeah! Woo! The Croods, a new age. Connect your DVR to the internet to buy today. Visit www.directtv.com slash get connected to learn more. I could hear the thunder. I knew, I knew that we were getting a storm, but just suddenly the hail started coming down. It literally sounds like rocks are hitting the side of your house. When I talked to Hippo, my first call, I felt immediately like they cared about my home like they cared about their own home. They were really concerned about every detail, down to did my grill have a dent in it? I had a lot of questions about how the process would go. They um, spoke my language. They didn't talk a bunch of insurance speak. Once I talked to Hippo, I felt a lot better. They made me feel that they were on top of it. Hey, welcome back everybody to Off the Mound presented by Sloan. Well, we are thrilled and honored to have this guy stopping by the show. He is the manager of the World Series champion, Los Angeles Dodgers, Dave Roberts. Doc, how are you, man? Thanks so much for joining us. Jeff, yeah, I'm doing well. Um, it's been a long time since we had to chat. Um, I'm living my best life, like you said, coming off the World Series championship. Now I'm at home in San Diego. Uh, spending time with family, raring up to go. So as we sit here right now, I've got a 
few more days and I'm heading to uh, Glendale. I know. Can you believe it? it happens so fast, right? Like here we were just a short time ago. You're on the field in Texas winning a World Series. Now you're two weeks away from pitchers and catchers being there. It's crazy, and and it's and I think it goes with 2020 with all the uh, uncertainty and all the unique times. So in baseball, uh, is no exception. So, you know, with all the rules, there was talk about pushing things back. But I think uh, as as of right now, we're going to move forward and you know adhere to protocols and get pitches and catches here. And I got my first uh, meeting on the 17th, so I just got to wrap my head around that. And uh, I'm excited to go and uh, and. Uh, Defend our championship. How about that? I'm curious, and like I, you know, haven't had a chance to talk to you about this, but you guys for, you know, years in a row, right, going to the NLCS, going to back-to-back -back World Series, uh, going to the DS, then getting there and finally getting that opportunity to say you're champions. What was that feeling like of chasing that carrot for so long and then finally just getting to eat the heck out of that thing? I think uh, the chasing uh, is relevant in that my first initial uh, emotion was relief. And I think that me as a, as a manager, I didn't appreciate or give credit uh, to, um, and didn't want to uh, intentionally, of the pressure uh, of having to bring a championship back to a city uh, after 32 years. Um, but once we, and, and kind of getting up to the top of the mountain, and then uh, failing and trying to do it again and again. Um, so once we, uh, you know, Julio Urias made that last out, got that last out, uh, there was relief. And then shortly thereafter, in the days following, there was a lot of uh, joy and elation. But I didn't appreciate how much kind of uh, pressure I was kind of, uh, you know, fighting off for so many years. You are a man of, of two different races. You're black, you're Asian. How special was it for you um, to, A, be the second black manager ever behind Cito Gaston, which I remember, 1990s uh, early Blue Jays winning the World Series there, um, and then also, too, to be the first ever Asian-born manager. Those are two uh, pretty incredible accomplishments right there. It is. It is. And, and uh, I, I don't take that lightly. <clears throat> I do have a hard time sort of recognizing that and, and uh, appreciating it. I think I get... I'm guilty of living in the now. And I think as a manager, you know, you're always trying to look forward and, and think about how on the margins you can continue to be better. Um, but gosh, this game is so difficult. So if you can't enjoy winning a championship, then uh, what are we doing this for? Um, so yeah, I got a call from Cito, uh, a man that I didn't know, um, but I certainly respected from afar. I remember being at UCLA when the Blue Jays, uh, when he led that Blue Jays team back-to-back uh, -back championship. So for him to get a call, for me to get a call from him was crazy, uh, amazing. And uh, I know my mom's family back in uh, Japan were very excited for me. So yeah, to be biracial, um, it's something that I do feel that we can be better at in our industry as far as having diversity, as far as on the player side, the front office, the coaching side. So uh, yeah, I, I, I do feel that um, I'm sort of kind of creating opportunities and I want to continue to be good so other minorities do get an opportunity. I do think that for me this past year uh, allowed me to grow in the sense that I was always a guy that, you know, you're a ball player, you stay in your lane, you play baseball, and that's what you do. You're great to the kids, the fans. Um, but this year forced me, our players, to kind of come out of our comfort zone uh, to speak up about what's right. And so I felt that uh, I had to kind of step out of my comfort zone to kind of use my platform to speak about what's right. And I think it impacted our country uh, in that small little bit in a positive way. And collectively, I think athletes, baseball players have done that, which I think has been fantastic. Yeah, I couldn't agree with more. Um, you know, and the work that the Players Alliance is doing all over the country as they tour around obviously led by Curtis Granderson there doing incredible things. Um, so uh, good for you, man. I was, I was so thrilled, you know, we played against each other um, and, and watching you play and obviously watching you win a world series as a player, but um, to see, you know, kind of everything you go through as a manager from the outside looking in to see you win a world series. Uh, you know, I, I was just so happy for you and your entire coaching staff and for your players. So uh, congratulations on that again. That was, that was pretty special stuff. 
No, it, it was. And, and like, uh, you know, you're talking about Clayton Kershaw, who his legacy, he's going to be a Hall of Famer, uh, first ballot Hall of Famer. But, you know, for people to try to take a, take a stab at him and talk about he hasn't won the big one and, you know, he doesn't perform in the postseason, you know, guys like that, the fan base, you know, and I've got so many you know, letters and, and emails and texts about people with grandparents and things like that. You just don't understand the scope of, and, you know, you know, in Chicago, it's like, that was 106 years. And I was fortunate to be on the Red Sox team in 86 years in, in Boston. So, you know, it's 32 years. It's still a long time, but you don't really yeah. realize the scope of what winning a championship does for a city and people individually. I was bummed for you guys because you guys didn't get a parade, but then, I said all they needed to do was just follow each other in rush hour traffic in L.A. That's pretty much <laughs> crazy speed right there. <laughs> I hear you, man, no doubt. Uh, that's the one thing about, uh, I, I guess if I could point to one thing that the pandemic has been a positive, the L.A. traffic has certainly subsided. Um, but I will say, man, I had dreams of uh, having a parade with the Lakers in Los Angeles, LeBron, Mookie Betts, Kershaw. That would have been crazy. Oh, by the way, speaking of Mookie Betts, could you be any more of an impact? You get traded with all the expectations of the world. And I know Mookie, and he's such a great kid, and he just cares about going out there and winning baseball games. You make that trade, and then he comes over, and boom, he does exactly everything's asked and more, and you guys go out and win the World Series. I, I just don't know how he does it. I, I really don't. And uh, you talk about a guy who's 5'9", 180, who is just, I mean, I guess you can say overachiever, but he's just, the biggest compliment Depp I can give him is he's present. And I say that in all facts. There's not many guys that can come into a clubhouse uh, and change uh, and enhance the culture. And uh, Mookie did that. And, uh, you know, I don't want to put him on the same level as Tom Brady, uh, but he's doing a lot of things that, that Tom obviously did to the Bucks in this year. Well, you know, you got a talent pool over there in L.A. that is... Uh that is desirable by a lot of teams. They wish they had that. And you add a little addition this offseason. We're going to take a little break, and we're going to get back here and talk a little bit about your new free agent signing as well as your and I's matchups because i got a little story I want to share with everybody out there. So we're going to take a short little break, and we're going to come back with World Series manager Dave Roberts on Off the Mound, presented by Sloan. Time to get up, sweetie. Most people might not think much about all the little things you do every day. But for me, just being able to do those little things is the best part of my day. Ready, Mom? It hasn't been easy, but sometimes the hardest things in life have the best rewards. And it's all because of my amazing friends at the Spartan's Hospitals for Children and people like you who support them every month. When you call the number on your screen and just give $19 a month, you'll be helping other kids like me do the amazing things that make up the best part of our day. Because Schreiner's Hospital is more than just a hospital. It's when my back is better, where my legs get stronger, where I get to be a kid where it's the best part of my day. With your gift of just $19 a month, only 63 cents a day, we'll send you this adorable Love to the Rescue blanket as a thank you. Please go online to loveshriners.org right now on your phone or computer to send your love to the rescue today. Will you send your love to the rescue today? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving. Because at Shriners Hospitals for Children, Going to the hospital is like going to see family. It really is the best part of my day. Please call or go online right now to give. If operators are busy, please wait patiently or go to loveshriners.org right away. Your gift will help kids just like me have the best part of our day. You've been waiting for retirement. That means a trusted Medicare plan from Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois is waiting for you. If you're 65 years or older, choose a plan that gives you more peace of mind for those moments ahead. Through it all.
Hey, welcome back, everybody, to Off the Mound, presented by Sloan as we sit down with World Series manager for the Los Angeles Dodgers, Dave Roberts. Um, we talked about it before we went to break Mookie Betts last year. This year, you guys make a big splash again, and you go and get the guy on the free agent market, the biggest pitcher out there, Trevor Bauer, decides to come there, A, on a three-year deal for a massive amount of money per year. Um, but talk about that, adding that to your already incredible rotation. Uh, you know, I, I know no one's going to feel sorry for us. Um, <laughs> uh, obviously, Trevor was the number one free agent on the market, and you win with pitching, um, pitching depth, elite pitching. Uh, our, our goal as a, with the Dodgers is to win the World Series every year. And so when you're talking about winning 11 games in the postseason or last year 13 games uh, in a postseason, uh, you know, he was a guy that I loved our starting staff before Trevor, but this is a guy that was from Los Angeles, went to UCLA, and really wanted to be a Dodger and always wanted to be a Dodger. And I had a conversation with him a couple of days ago about, you know, being in the nosebleeds with his father and his first baseball game and hoping one day to become a Dodger. And so now uh, for us, ownership, Mark Walter, uh, Andrew Friedman to kind of make it happen with his representation. Um, I'm certainly excited. I know Clayton, uh, Walker, Bueller, all these guys are thrilled. So he just makes a very good team uh, that much better. So I'm thrilled to have him. You as a manager, um, incredible. You've been doing great stuff. Manager of the year, now World Series champion. But I want to go down a little bit of memory lane with you. You as a player, um, first of all, drafted twice out of college, never a high draft pick you know, twice out of UCLA, and then, you know, you just do your thing and get to the big leagues and have a 10-year career. Uh, you know, what was that like just knowing, you know, that you were good enough, but teams weren't quite giving you the credit, but then you were able to just go out there and get a chance to play and, and do your thing? Um, do you see that and be able to pass that story along to younger players to be able to help them out? Yeah. I do. I do. Damn. I, I think for me, it was it was that chip on my shoulder. I went to UCLA and I thought I performed well and, and obviously didn't uh, reflect on the scouts decision and team's decision to draft me. I was drafted low. I signed for a whopping thousand um, dollars. But that was a chip on my shoulder. And I, I think that, you know, in baseball where we play, it's always a, a marathon, not a sprint. You know, you talk mm -hmm. about players and coaches always talking about there needs to be a sense of urgency. So for me, uh, I always had that sense of urgency. I always had to play well and felt that every opportunity that, that I did get, uh, I had to earn and I didn't want to give it away and I want to take full advantage of it. So um, being a 28th round draft pick, continuing to kind of work my way up the ladder, spending five years in the minor leagues, uh, that kind of motivated me every time I took the field. Um, you know, I was talking to uh, James Shields the other day. Uh, we were playing golf, and, you know, he had a longer career. And we were both talking about that we didn't leave anything on the table. We left it all out on the field. And for me right now, as I sit here with you, it's like I left it all out there on the field. And uh, respect of my teammates, my coaches, I think I've earned that. And it started kind of me being drafted really late and having that chip on my shoulder. Um, speaking of competing out on the field, so – we're playing against each other, and this is 2006, May 8th. I went and found the date. I looked this up, and I don't know if you remember this. <laughs> I hadn't pitched in a week. I was closing for the team, and we came to San Diego, and you guys were winning 7-3, to three, and you lead off the inning, and you drag a bunt for a base hit. Yep. Do you remember how mad I was at you when I looked over at you? <laughs> so... I do. I do. And you know what's funny is that the, uh, the listeners are going to have a good time with this one because – I'm an old school player and everything that I've learned is that uh, as long as a grand slam, you play until a grand slam can't tie the game. So for me, we had just lost seven in a row, something like that. And then the Dodgers came back. I was with the Padres at that time. The Dodgers came back and beat us in the ninth inning. And so for me to lead off the game and I didn't know you hadn't pitched in, in a week. So I apologize, Deb. I love you. But for me, it's like I was leading off. I wanted to get that extra jug run so uh, Grand Slam couldn't tie it. So I lead off, butt base it. D leads at first. He's pissed at me. You're pissed at me. Dusty's the manager. He's chirping at me. So then I'm mad. I steal second base. We score yes. another run. We win the game. And then I will say this. We played you guys like a week later. First pitch of the game in Wrigley Field, I get drilled in the ribs by one of your pitchers. And then I was more mad, so then I stole second base again. 
and uh, score run, and then me and Michael Barrett got into it at some point in that series. But that's old school baseball, man. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think I was probably, Dave, more mad at myself for not being ready to field the bunt than I yeah. was at you. You were just the vehicle and outlet for me to get mad at. <laughs> and then but you that's stole second. I'm like, and now because... you're going to take second too? Yeah, yeah. And that's why I loved you because there's no one that competed harder than you did. Dude, you've had these amazing moments as a player, you know, something so special like that, to be able to manage a great team to a World Series um, championship. You just sometimes just sit back and just pinch yourself and say, wow, what a life I'm living. I do. I do that all the time. Um, I, I look at, you know, I've been with my wife for 25, well, we've been married for 25 years and high school sweethearts. I got two beautiful kids, uh, one playing baseball, you know, a daughter who's looking at colleges right now. And I just re remember, you know, where I started trudging through the minors and then now to see, you know, carve out a 10 year career uh, of, as a player, coach, coach, and then now manage. I just, a lot of gratitude. And I think that for me, as people that do know me, see me positive uh, on the daily. And that's the reason why, because I just have a lot to be grateful for. And I want everyone that, you know, walks or comes across my path to feel the same exact way. Well, you're, you're always positive. Um, you don't just talk the talk, you walk the walk, you lead by example. And uh, you're a leader of great men there. You, you did great things winning the World Series. Congratulations to you. Uh, and thanks so much for taking the time and stopping by out off the mound here with me and, and catching up on life and baseball. Awesome, Demp. Great catching up with you, man. And uh, I love the uh, sport coat, man. You're always <laughs> dialed to the nines. I love it. Thanks, Dave. Well, there you guys have it. Manager of the World Series champion, Los Angeles Dodgers, Dave Roberts, stopping by off the mound. We're going to take a short little break. We'll be back right after this with more Off the Mound, presented by Sloan. Your Chicago Cubs are reporting to spring training, and that means Cubs 360 Daily is back. Host Cole Wright is joined by John Bugshambi, Jim Deshays, Bruce Levine, and more. We'll get you primed for the start of spring training and look ahead to the Cubs 2021 season. Don't miss Cubs 360 Daily, weeknights at 5 on Marquee Sports Network. Just to let me down, let, let me, me down. down, and mess me around. And the worst of all, if you ride, you get it. Geico Motorcycle 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. We might root for different teams, but we all respect the game. And we can all root for each other when we wear a mask. Mask up, America. Do you have concerns about mild memory loss related to aging? Prevagen is the number one pharmacist recommended memory support brand. You can find it in the vitamin aisle in stores everywhere. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. We are no stranger to adversity. Our bodies are made to be challenged, to adapt, to heal, and rebuild. At the Illinois Bone and Joint Institute, we know that getting knocked down just gives us an opportunity to get back up, better and stronger than before. Because while setbacks can seem relentless, our bodies are resilient, and the comeback is always the best part. Welcome back to Off the Mound, presented by Sloan. Well, here at Off the Mound, we've been celebrating Black History Month, and this week we want to highlight a Black Cubs player uh, that spent time in the North Side wearing a cubby blue. Well, this man was not only a player, 
um, and a very, very good one at that on his time on the north side. He was also the hitting coach from 2003 to 2006. Uh, the Sarge, Gary Matthews. Uh, I came over to Chicago in 2004. He was already the hitting coach um, and instantly bonded with, with Sarge. Uh, the many stories and laughs we would share. He was always full of knowledge, insight, um, and I love just kicking back and, and hearing some of the old stories from the game. He came over at the end of spring training in a trade in 1984. He played with an energy, with, with a passion, uh, with a love of the game, and uh, I'm gonna beat you every day I walk out there type of attitude. Uh, he, he could beat you with his bat, he could beat you with his arm, his glove. He did it all. Um, I always loved the memories of watching Sarge, uh, you know, leg out a single into a double or a double into the occasional triple. But as he'd run around first base, as he's coming, he'd do that thing where he hits his helmet and his hat would pop off, his helmet would pop off, and that afro would come out. And he'd just go barreling in towards second base to stretch it into a double. He always played that way. It was fire, it was passion, um, and it showed. He had 266 on his three and a half seasons in Chicago. 48 home runs, 176 RBIs, and his best OPS that he had at any stop along his big league career. You had one of the most special bonds uh, with the Cub fans. Uh, the fact that you would hit a home run, and then you'd go out to left field after the inning, the top half of the inning, and you'd be out there, and the whole bleachers would stand on their feet, they'd put their right hand up to their forehead, and you'd do your warm-ups, you'd go about your business, and then after that last warm-up toss, you'd turn around to the outfield, put your hand up and you give them one of these and the whole entire bleachers would do it back to you. That's a bond uh, that you have with Cubs fans for the rest of your life. So on behalf of everybody here at Off the Mound, on behalf of myself, Gary Matthews, Sarge, we salute you. Well, that's all the time we have, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in this week. So great for Dave Roberts. Thanks to him for stopping by the show. You're not going to want to miss it. Next week, we got the Hall of Fame of the Hawk. Andre Dawson is going to be joining us right here on Off the Mound. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have yourself a great weekend. I'm Ryan Dempster. We'll see you later. Go time. That's right. Welcome to Cubs 360 presented by Miller Lite. I'm Cole Wright, back at your service as always. Now we have a busy show planned for you today. We're going to look ahead to 2021 and what the season may hold. Plus, we're going to catch up with the Cubs president of baseball operations, Jed Hoyer. He's going to stop by and he's going to let us pick his brain. But first things first, let's get those introductions out of the way. Let's introduce our panel. He's covered baseball in Chicago for 30 plus years. It's our Marquee Sports Network contributor, Bruce Levine. Also, she is our Cubs sideline reporter for Marquee Sports Network. You know her, you love her. It's Taylor McGregor, and he's our voice in the booth. It's JD. He's a former big leaguer as well. It's Jim Deshays. Now, guys, as we know, it's not yet official, but it's very close. Jake Arrieta and the Cubs, well, on the verge of a reunion. He's reportedly returning to Chicago after agreeing to a one-year deal reportedly worth six and a half to seven million. Now, he's 34 years old, and he pitched for the Cubs five years prior to his last three years in Philadelphia. Took a little bit of a dip in those stats, but of course, he's looking to bounce back just like he does. Now, Bruce, initial thoughts when you heard that Jake Arrieta and the Cubs were going to meet again? My initial thoughts were great. They pop possibly have a number three starter, and they might have a four or five, but nonetheless, in Jake Arrieta, you're going to get a professional outing. If he's healthy, he's going to go out there and throw you five plus, no longer six plus, but that will still be plenty for him. And if it's a, any semblance of the Jake of old, uh, that will be a big plus for the Cubs going forward. But credibility is what the Cubs are buying here for $6 million a year. Yeah, I completely agree with Bruce. And in addition to everything he said, this is nostalgia, right? It brings back so many fond memories of what he was able to do in a Cubs uniform. And for me, I kind of see that rejuvenating the clubhouse a little bit. You know, this is a guy who remembers a winning culture in Chicago. And so, uh, like Bruce said, all of the, the things that he could bring as a pitcher are important, but what he's going to bring to the clubhouse, I see um, important as well. So was was fired up to see this signing. Absolutely. And the deal, not yet ironclad. It's still pending that physical. But, J.D., we know that uh, Jake Arrieta struggled just a little bit in Philadelphia. What can he do to snap back to that form he had when he was with the Cubs previously? 
Well, you know, something in between what he did his first go around with the Cubs and what he did in Philadelphia would be just fine. It's hard to imagine that he could come close to replicating the numbers he had uh, his Cy Young award season. That second half of 2015 was as good as anybody I've ever seen over a prolonged stretch. Uh, but as you mentioned, he'll be 35 on opening day this year. Uh, had a hamstring issue last year, bone spurs in the elbow the year before. Uh, I think if I'm David Ross and we're playing the price is right, or let's make a deal or whatever game show you want to play, and somebody says, hey, Jake Arrieta is going to give me uh, 25 starts, 160 innings with an ERA around four. Would you take that or what's behind the curtain? I say, give me that. I'll be happy with that from uh, Jake Arrieta on a $6 million deal. Yeah, interesting to see if we'll get the Bob Barker, Jake Arietta, or will we get the Drew Carey, Jake Arietta, when it comes to the prices right now. Taylor, when it comes to his stretch with the Philadelphia Phillies, any concern there? Because his lowest ERA in Philadelphia was a 3.96. Well, I think there's a level of concern if you sign him to a three-year $75 million deal, right? He certainly didn't live up to what his contract was in Philadelphia, but for the Cubs, this is a low risk, high reward signing. JD mentioned that, you know, if he can just come in and be a three or four starter for them, that's going to be good news. And the other good news when you look at his history is the Cubs are the only organization that he has found success with. And so you have David Ross who's been there. He has familiarity with Tommy Hotteby. So there's a lot of guys who, who know him, know what he was like when he was at his peak. Now, we all know he's three years older. We don't expect him to get to back to that point. But even if they could fix something, and, and we've seen success with the pitch lab, so whatever that may be, um, I, I think it's a good signing. And, and yeah, those numbers in Philadelphia weren't great, but I think history um, – you know, maybe points that he could have success again with the Cubs, and nobody's asking him to be the 2015 version of himself. They're just trying to get him, him there, in there, and and like JD said, you know, if he could have around a four ERA and and give you 150 plus innings, it's going to be a solid year for him. Absolutely, Jake Arrieta, hoping that his B-roll moving forward looks more like Chicago than it did with the Phillies. Now, J.D., we know that Jake Arrieta, he's a dog. He's a competitor in every sense of the word. So what's he going to do for this clubhouse dynamic again? Yeah, you know, it's hard to say. He, he is, you're right. He's kind of an alpha male type, uh, a, a lot of bravado. Um, uh, takes a lot of confidence out to the mound with him. I think some young pitchers could kind of learn from that. But, but I think maybe more importantly is what will the clubhouse mean for Arietta? versus what will Arietta mean for the clubhouse. And I think being back in, in familiar terrain, a place where he had a lot of success around some players that he was teammates with for some very good times, David Ross being the manager, um, I think there's a chance that that, that helps him a, a little bit. I don't know that he ever really got comfortable in Philadelphia. Um, he had some tough times over there. Um, so I think a return to Chicago where he had great success and being in that clubhouse, being around those guys, uh, could give him a, a little bit of a, a boost mentally. Yeah, comfort on the mound, that is paramount. We've seen him be comfortable before. He's a Cy Young winner. He's thrown a pair of no-hitters. And uh, once that physical goes through, Jake Arrieta once again will be a member of the Chicago Cubs. Now, we're just getting started here on Cubs 360, right around the corner. Well, the big boss man, Jed Hoyer, he's going to join us to discuss 2021. Jake Arrieta, plus some of those swirling KB rumors. That and more, it's coming up next, right here on Cubs 360, presented by Miller Lite. Hey folks, I'm Ryan Dempster, host of Off the Mound on Marquee Sports Network. Well, just like any good interview, there's always the extended cut. You can listen to those conversations on our Off the Mound podcast presented by Sloan. That's right, all you need to do is go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and download them today. Five Hour Energy helps you get stuff done. And now, when you purchase Five Hour Energy, you can instantly win cash prizes. For complete rules and how to enter, visit 5hewin.com. Five Hour Energy, the official sponsor of getting stuff done. As many of the nation's most trusted hospitals, we all know this. The science has not changed. Masks slow the spread of COVID-19. Every one of our healthcare professionals is asking you to do one very simple thing. Let's keep it up. Let's mask up. Right here, baby. The sooner you recognize the signs of autism, 
the sooner you can make a lifetime of difference for your child. Start by answering a few simple questions at screenforautism.org. I could hear the thunder. I knew I knew that we were getting a storm, but just suddenly the hail started coming down. It literally sounds like rocks are hitting the side of your house. When I talked to Hippo, my first call, I felt immediately like they cared about my home like they cared about their own home. They were really concerned about every detail, down to did my grill have a dent in it? I had a lot of questions about how the process would go. They um, spoke my language. They didn't talk a bunch of insurance speak. Once I talked to Hippo, I felt a lot better. They made me feel that they were on top of it. You're not getting any younger. I'm just hitting my stride. You're so old, you should have been planning for your funeral five years ago. You're almost officially dead. Oh. <laughs> well, if I do drop dead, at least my family will get their benefits fast. Just call USA Family Protection. I did it, and it was one and done. No blood work and no doctor's visit. You're right. What? You said that I was right about something? Did anybody hear Sir, this? I see your point. Let's not get crazy here. USA Family Protection. Apply today by calling the number on your screen. Back to Cubs 360 and still waiting on that physical, but the reunion is imminent. In five seasons with the Chicago Cubs, Jake Arrieta, you can see the numbers right there. He was absolutely marvelous. 68 and 31, a 2.73 ERA and a microscopic whip of 1.03. Needless to say, Jake the Snake hoping for more after three seasons in Philadelphia. So back here on Cubs 360, presented by Miller Lite, Cole Wright and Bruce Levine. And now we're joined by our special guest. It's the president of baseball operations for the Chicago Cubs, Jed Hoyer. And Jed, let's get down to brass tacks because Jake Arrieta, as we know, it's right on the horizon of being a Cub once again. So can you give us the nuts and bolts of actually what went into the reunion? Yeah, it's not official yet because we got to do the physical, but now uh, we're excited about it. Um, I've been talking to Jake for, I guess, a couple of weeks. I think we had, you know, two or three conversations. We've texted back and forth a little bit. And um, he made it clear that he'd love to come back here. You know, he had so much success here. Uh, he's got great relationships with, uh, with Rossi, uh, with Tommy Hottavy, with Mike Borzello. Um, and I think that familiarity, I think, uh, will help him get back to, um, you know, the, the kind of pitcher I know he can be. So, obviously, the last couple of year, years in Philly weren't all he wanted. Um, but I think uh, the Cubs and... Like I said, the comfort and the people, I think we can get him um, back to being uh, an excellent pitcher for us. Jed, uh, you've talked uh, to us uh, people in the media many times and recently about the fact that rumors are just rumors and what you hear about Chris Bryant or any other player most of the time is a rumor. But uh, we're, we're here in, in spring training now. You're there. Everybody's ready to go. Um, with those rumors there, I, I know you had a conversation with Chris recently. Can you fill people in on what that com uh, conversation entailed without giving away the, the personal side of it? Yeah, I mean, without giving away the personal side, you know, the gist of the conversation was just, um, please come to me and ask me questions if there's rumors out there. Um, so many of these rumors are, are, are have no fact. Uh, basis and and i understand that you know people are going to comment on them they are news um but i i didn't want you know him to to get bothered by them if you you know being traded is a big deal like it kind of up it kind of uproots your life and your, your wife and your parents and everyone you know gets concerned about it and so if you have a question just ask me and i'll be honest you know yes this is you know something we've discussed or no i haven't talked to them in three weeks and there's there's nothing to it and so that was the the gist of it, you know, besides the personal part of the conversation was to just ask me and I'll always just, I'll, I'll shoot you straight. Um, because, you know, he's been awesome for us. We've known each other for a long time and there's no reason not to do that. Now you said that 
Chris Bryant is in a good place mentally. Jed, how do you feel that'll translate for him in 2021? Because his numbers in 2020, not really what we're used to seeing from a guy who you can pencil in almost every single year for about 25 and 90. Yeah, and I think you could say that about a bunch of guys on our team. There's a bunch of guys that struggled. Uh, you know, last year was strange. Um, and unfortunately, we had a cluster of guys that, that underperformed. And so um, I think all those guys are going to bounce back and have really good years. Um, they, all, they all worked out hard this offseason. They're all excited to, to get going. And um, I, I believe in the track record. I believe in the, the back of their baseball card. And I think they'll get back to those levels. Um, and so, I mean, I think they're excited about it and, you know, they have something to prove, you know, no one wants to sit on, on bad numbers for a whole winter. And unfortunately for those guys, the season ended, they didn't really have a chance to, to bounce back. So uh, they're hungry and um, I have no doubt they'll come in here and uh, they'll be excited to get going. Chad, with a little push here from the business office, uh, you've been able to do a lot of work here and good work over the last couple of weeks. Should uh, Cub fans expect a couple more additions to the bullpen? Is there another infielder that might be in the mix? Uh, wh what can you do generally to tell us about uh, where you're at and more additions that you'd like to make? Yeah, I think they, they should expect, you know, um, at least one more bullpen addition. Um, we won't stop uh, you know, trying to add pitching. Whether we can do it or not uh, is unclear, but we'll continue to talk to different pitchers and, you know, some of that, uh, might be on minor league deals because um, our four-man roster is getting pretty full, but we'll continue to try to add pitching um, and and to round out the team. You know, when we have opportunities, we'll we'll look to um, to supplement things. But I think by and large, this will be the team we'll we'll go forward with. But there may be a, another couple additions because it's been such a late free agent market that there's still some really good players out there. So you maybe want to add just a few more other players, potentially offensively. And Jed, as you take a look at last season, you know, team batting average of 220, not where you want that to be. So how do David Ross and company, how do they get the sticks going this season? Yeah, we've talked about that a lot this winter. You know, one of the things we struggled with a lot last year was velocity, which is strange. You know, I think we have a team that uh, has been a good fastball hitting team in the past, and we've um, kind of degraded in that area. And so I, I would say, the two areas we focus the most on this winter, as we talked about it, are you know, hitting velocity and then making better decisions. You know, our decision making at the plate has really degraded over the last five years, and we need to get back to really grinding at bats, making good decisions. Um, we have really talented players as a team offense. We've struggled, and that's something we have to get get back to is making good decisions at the plate, grinding out at bats. And being willing to, to pass the baton, you know, take your walk, you know, on 3-2, you know, don't swing at uh, a chase slider on 3-2 because you're anxious. You want to drive in that run. Let the guy behind you drive in that run. And I think that that goes a long way. So um, I'd say the two biggest areas, like I said, fastball velocity, you know, hitting velocity, and then making better decisions. The spring training time is the most relaxed time of the year in general for everybody uh, conversations can be uh, had, afternoon discussions. Do you expect to uh, sit down with your uh, core free agents and have some conversations about them for now and the future uh, with spring training upon us? Yeah, you know, for sure. And you're right. This is the best time to you know, have contract negotiations, and we'll certainly sit down with some of these players and, and have those, those conversations. You know, some guys probably want to go out and um, – you know, prove themselves and kind of push their value back where they think it belongs. But some guys probably want to have those discussions and we'll figure out who, you know, which guys, you know, want to, but, um, you know, one of the things I really missed last year about our season was that it was really hard to be around the players um, with all the restrictions last year. We, you know, that casual conversation in the lunchroom and that ca casual conversation on the road, it you know, didn't happen as much. And, you know, one of the great things about, this group is we, we know each other well we've been around each other for a long time uh, even though we have a lot of restrictions this year um one of the things i'm looking forward to this spring is being able to get back to that and being able to see these guys and, and have those conversations and, and and get back to feeling like it's a more personal personal relationship as opposed to last season where it was difficult just because we weren't around each other much because the, the restrictions um, didn't allow that hopefully this spring we can sit down 
you know, outside socially distance and, and have some conversations um, about their future. Absolutely. 2021, just like 2020, it will see a few different wrinkles, but as we know, it will be more normal than last season was. That was for sure. Jed Hoyer, president of baseball operations for the Chicago Cubs. Thanks as always for the time and enjoy that warm weather down there in Arizona. Awesome. Thanks guys. Survive the cold and uh, you know, watching baseball in a couple weeks will make you feel better. So um, take care and I'll talk to you soon. Still ahead, more pitching talk on deck. Zach Davies, Craig Kimbrell, Jeremy Jeffress, possibly a free agent acquisition. We'll cover all the bases next right here on Cubs 360 presented by Miller Lite. Time to get up, sweetie. Most people might not think much about all the little things you do every day. But for me, just being able to do those little things is the best part of my day. Ready, Mom? It hasn't been easy, but sometimes the hardest things in life have the best rewards. And it's all because of my amazing friends at the Spartan's Hospitals for Children and people like you who support them every month. When you call the number on your screen and just give $19 a month, You'll be helping other kids like me do the amazing things that make up the best part of our day. Because Schreiner's Hospital is more than just a hospital. It's when my back is better, where my legs get stronger, where I get to be a kid, where it's the best part of my day. With your gift of just $19 a month, only 63 cents a day, we'll send you this adorable Love to the Rescue Blanket as a thank you. Please go online to loveshriners.org right now on your phone or computer to send your love to the rescue today. Will you send your love to the rescue today? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving. Because at Shriners Hospitals for Children, going to the hospital is like going to see family. It really is the best part of my day. Please call or go online right now to give. If upper is or busy, Please wait patiently or go to loveshrunners.org right away. Your gift will help kids just like me have the best part of our day. It's time for the Great American Sales Event at your local Ford store. To celebrate, we're offering 1,000 President's Day cash on top of other offers on Ford F-150. With deals on America's workhorse, now's a great time to buy. Shop in store or online before March 1st. For a limited time, get 1,000 President's Day cash on a 2020 Ford F-150 for $7,250 in total value. Celebrate during the Great American Sales Event going on now. Well, it's always good catching up with Chad Hoyer as he soaks up the sun in Arizona. And he's been a busy man this offseason. As you can see, here's a few notable additions uh, when it comes to the Sheriff Andrew Chafin. Well, he resigned with the team. And, of course, headlining that offseason activity, it's Jock Peterson and Jake Arrieta as the Cubs look to win another National League Central title. And we're back here on Cubs 360, presented by Miller Lite with Bruce Levine, Taylor McGregor, and J.D. Jim Deshays. And uh, we saw Zach Davies on that list. We know Zach Davies came over to the Cubs via that U Darvish trade to the San Diego Padres. Now, J.D., when it comes to Davies, we know he's somewhat of a finesse guy. So what should we expect out of him in 2021? Yeah, I expect him to be good. I think he's a solid number two major league pitcher. You know, fifth best ERA in the National League last year. Yes, a truncated season, but you go back to 2019, combine those two years, he still has the seventh best ERA in the NL, just a tick behind Kyle Hendricks. And that's always been the comp, right? Zach Davies as Kyle Hendricks light, so to speak, uh, 88, 89 mile an hour fastball. The one thing that kind of differentiated the two over the years in terms of style was Hendricks threw his changeup a lot more, Davies threw the curveball a little bit more. Um, but Davies reversed that last year, he threw his changeup over 40% of the time, way more than any other pitcher, any other starting pitcher in the league. And his swing and miss rate went way up because of it, his strikeout rate was up. So I, I think they've unlocked something with Davies over in San Diego. He went from a very solid major league pitcher to maybe uh, better than many expect. So I, I think he's gonna be really good this year. 
Mm, that sounds good. And Bruce, we saw that full screen graphic of some of those moves that were made during the offseason. And you can never have too many arms in the bullpen, as we know. So when it comes to a potential free agent arm that could help out David Ross down the stretch, who, who do you think it would be? Well, for me, you need a guy like Trevor Cahill. And he's still a free agent out there. Former pitcher with the Cubs, 15 and 16. What you need in this time, uh, especially coming off of 12 or 13 starts for all the pitchers last year in the truncated 60-game season, is a swingman, a guy that can start and he can also relieve. And most teams are going to need six, seven, even eight starting pitchers because nobody expects to go 150, 160 innings this year. They are just going to slow roll the starting pitchers. So a guy like uh, Cahill, who can still pitch at age 32, would be a very valuable guy to add. What about my guy, JJ? I mean, come on. Don't you want to see his yeah. food truck outside of Wrigley Field? Does that have any pull for you, Bruce? Come on. No, but in all seriousness, watching JJ pitch last year, having David Ross trust him in those, those big-time innings. He had a 1.54 ERA, which was the lowest amongst relievers with notable innings. Um, his whip actually lower than you Darvish's last year and not to mention eight saves which is twice as many as anyone else um for the cubs last year so and i think the familiarity we saw what tommy hadavi was able to do with jj credit to both of them for making that relationship work again and getting jj back to the player that the cubs knew he could be so i would love to see them re-sign jj yeah, he has that lockdown mentality he's so fun to watch pitch and it's just so much fun to say jeffers express when it comes to highlight packages. There you have it. Now we're almost done here on Cubs 360 presented by Miller Lite. Before we roll out, Bruce, Taylor, and JD, they're going to give us their favorite storylines as we head forward towards 2021. That's next right here on Cubs 360 presented by Miller Lite. If you're 65 years or older or will soon turn 65, look to a Medicare plan that cares back. From Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, the right plan for all your big plans ahead. That's the benefit of Blue through it all. At Mastercraft, we make great doors inside and out. Whether you're looking to update your home with a mission-style door, a rustic-looking, knotty alder door, a classic six-panel door, a modern flat-panel door, a new traditional door, or something else to complete your home. We've got you covered because with Mastercraft, we make great doors inside and out. Save big money at Menards. Five Hour Energy helps you get stuff done. And now when you purchase Five Hour Energy, you can instantly win cash prizes. For complete rules and how to enter, visit 5hewin.com. Five Hour Energy, the official sponsor of getting stuff done. West Indiana Acura dealer for attractive offers on the TLX. We are no stranger to adversity. Our bodies are made to be challenged, to adapt, to heal, and rebuild. At the Illinois Bone and Joint Institute, we know that getting knocked down just gives us an opportunity to get back up, better and stronger than before. Because while setbacks can seem relentless, our bodies are resilient, and the comeback is always the best part. Back with you here on Cubs 360, and we know we can't be together physically, but we can still get ready for baseball with the week-long celebration of all things Cubs. Join us this Sunday for Cubs Unconventional, a week-long virtual celebration to help kick off the Cubs 2021 campaign. All week, fans can access exclusive Cubs content, engage in interactive experiences, and much, much more. So be sure to follow Cubs and Watch Marquee across all social media platforms and check in all week long to participate in the celebration. Now, when it comes to the season, it is right around the corner. Here's a few key dates on Wednesday. Oh, be still my beating heart. Pitchers and catchers, they get their first spring workout in. And then on the 22nd, 
the whole squad gets together. March 1st, well, it's going to be a spring thing versus the San Diego Padres. Who knows if that game will be on Channel 4, not in lovely San Diego. But then April 1st, it's opening day. It's a division affair. It's versus the Pirates. Now, we're wrapping things up here on Cubs 360, presented by Miller Lite. Bruce, Taylor, and JD still in tow. And, guys, before the season gets underway, of course, we need to get some of those intriguing storylines. And, JD, I'm going to start with you. What's your most intriguing storyline, aside from having a brand-new partner in the booth? Yeah, that's a great story, isn't it? That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, well, what's the roster look like? Does Chris Bryant get traded? Does Jed pull the trigger and trade any of the other big name guys uh, on this roster? Obviously, everybody's going to pay attention to that. For me, um, starting pitching, uh, I'm very intrigued by how that all is going to shake out. Uh, with a focus on one guy in particular, Adbert Alzale, you know, this rotation and the rotation candidates for the most part are a bunch of finesse style guys, 89 to 91. Alzale is kind of the outlier. He's a guy that can go 95, 96. And you think about his last couple of appearances last year when he broke out that slider that he'd worked on down at the alternate site, that became a real swing and miss pitch for him. So he's that one guy in the mix that can really make a big leap from where he was last year to where he is in, in 2021. Yeah, and J.D., just to build off that point, uh, with the rotation, there are still some question marks. I mean, we talked about Arietta. That is a question mark of how he's going to perform this season. And um, I kind of remember last spring training, the big question mark was in the bullpen. There were so many new arms. How would they perform? And, and you remember at the beginning of the season, there was a little bit of a struggle. As of August 6th, which would have been a few weeks into the regular season, 7.30 ERA, they finished the second half or the rest of that season with a 3.6 ERA. So I'm excited to see how Tommy Hadaby and the pitching staff um, make these pitchers work and, and the way that they can work their magic, if you will, on some of the guys who, um, who look like they could be question marks going into this year. Amani is uh, all about Brian Baez and Rizzo, how they perform in a free agent year how they respond to reporters asking them about coming back or being traded, and if they can re come back and find the magic that was there before 2020. Well, we will see so many storylines to talk about as the season inches closer. and We're T-minus 44 days until opening day. So until then, for Bruce, Taylor, and J.D. and the whole crew at Marquee Sports Network, I'm Cole Wright. Spring training, it's right around the corner. We'll see you tomorrow. Stay warm. Trivia presented by Miller Lite. I'm your host, Chris Myers, and we're all at home hanging in there from our home to yours. We're going to have a little fun with some Cubs and Chicago centric sports trivia. Two contestants competing with ultimately a winner at the end, and you along at home could be our audience and try to guess the answers before we can. And let's welcome in our two contestants. First, say hi to Dan Plesak, analyst for the MLB Network, Marquee Sports Network, grew up in Indiana, 18 major league seasons, three all-star teams that he's uh, the ace and let's say hi to dan how are you dan chris good i i heard you talking briefly about a nine inning game just to warn you the boats left the dock i'm probably good for an inning and two thirds if you're going to try to get <laughs> nine innings out of me you called the wrong guy <laughs> all right well whatever whatever you could give us we have people in the bullpen but it, it won't be physically taxing it'll be mentally taxing which could be an issue for all of us. Your uh, your opponent is Carlos Pena. You heard him chuckling. Also, Marquee Sports Network, MLB Network, played 14 major league seasons, gold gloves, silver slugger, all-star selection. Carlos, uh, nice to have you with us, and welcome to Play at Home here, Marquee Sports Network. Dan, what are you talking about, man? I was hoping that maybe I could tire you out and maybe get, get you in the late innings, you know? I mean, that was my strategy all along. <laughs> Uh, Carlos, there isn't much heat on that fastball anymore. So if I were you, I would go up there swinging early. 
<laughs> well, I will. In I case will. We ha- <laughs> he'll take his cuts. He's always shown that. In case we have any factual concerns, uh, our fact checker research guru, Chris Antonacci, is with us. We call him Notch. And he'll be observing closely to help us out throughout the course of the game. All right, so the format is real simple, you guys. We play it's like a nine-inning game. Each contestant, same number of questions. First six innings, multiple choice. Seventh and eighth inning, you'll have a chance to steal some runs. And then you're also on the clock. You'll actually have a choice. And there's a great drama. It's never over until the ninth inning. And our walk-off question, you'll have a chance to make up ground. So if everybody's ready, uh, time for uh, Play at Home Trivia. Presented by Miller Lite. And by the way, Dan, you know, uh, you did face in your career pitching Tony Pena, Willie Mo Pena, Aronimo Pena. You never faced <laughs> Carlos Pena. So this is the first time this pitcher hitter matchup. We could have history here. It, we could have history. <laughs> so and and there, there isn't much life left on that fastball. So, Carlos, you don't have to worry about getting that front foot down. Just be ready. Pull the trigger. <laughs> I thought you Here's our work. first question. question. <laughs> All right. It's worth one run if you get it correct, Dad. Your first. Which team did Kerry Wood strike out a record tying 20 times back in 1998? Multiple choice here. A, is it the Milwaukee Brewers? B, the Pittsburgh Pirates? C, the Philadelphia Phillies? Or D, the Houston Astros? Chris, I'm, I'm proud to let you know that I repeated the sixth grade four times, and I don't need much <laughs> of an education. The Houston Astros, because I watched that game. It was a day game. Houston Astros. Uh, very uh, very good. You know, that lineup uh, it had two Hall of Famers in it. Greg Biggio, Jeff Bagwell, and even Moises Alou, uh, six-time All-Star, former Cubs. So that is correct. So you're on the board. Yeah, an early one nothing lead. So, Carlos, here's your chance to answer here. Which <laughs> Astros player Which Astros player did Kerry would strike out for lucky number 20? Was it A, Craig Biggio? B, Derek Bell, C, Jeff Bagwell, D, Jim Deshaies. Chris, this right here was absolutely hilarious because he missed this pitch, like, by maybe two feet. And when you watch it, I, I, I'm like, is this a wiffle, ga- wiffle ball game? Because that's exactly what it looked like. It was Derek Bell. I mean, it was hilarious Very good. how far. Goodness. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was great. And he he was a 300 hitter uh, that season. So this is you guys are you guys are doing great so far. It's a one one game. We go back to Dan. Record setters is the category here in the second inning. Which former Cub holds the major league record for most runs batted in in a season with 191? A. Hack Wilson. B. Aramis Ramirez. C. Andre Dawson. Or D. Chris Bryant. The only reason I know this answer, Chris. My first year when I played for the Cubs in 1993, walking down the hallway from the locker room, getting down are a bunch of pictures of old players. And I remember this because I thought, man, 191 RBIs, Hack Wilson. That's correct. Absolutely. You know, they, they didn't start keeping uh, that as a statistic, RBIs in Major League Baseball, until 1920. Obviously, in 29-30, he had a terrific season. All right, so 2 one lead. Carlos, to you, which former Cub holds the record for most gold gloves in a career? It's 18. Is it A, Mark Grace in a career now, B, Sean Dunstan, C, Greg Maddox, or D, Ryan Sandberg? You know, I, I would have easily gone for Mark Grace because he's one of my favorite players in, 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 in the history of, of the Cubs. All right, first baseman. But, I mean, Greg Maddox. Come on, this guy, nothing got by him. He's the answer. Greg Maddox. That is correct. Yes. Yeah, and, and a great pitcher. Six of his six of his 18 gold gloves came as a cup. If they gave a gold glove for, for talking, Mark Grace would have cleaned up with everybody on it. All right, so we have we, – we and I'm sure he's watching. We, uh, it's a 2-2 game. Let's go to the third inning. We're going to shift a little. If you're in Chicago for anything you do know about the Bears, NFL season, offseason here, which active NFL tight end was drafted in the first round? by the Bears. Active tight end A, Greg Olson, B, Tony Gonzalez, C, Trey Burton, or D, Mitchell Trubisky. (laughs) Well, I I feel this is a little unfortunate for Carlos because I grew up in the Chicago (laughs) area and I've been a Bears fan and I know that it's Greg Olson. That was the one that right off the get-go, I knew that answer. All right, well, absolutely correct. Selected 31st, of course, the Panthers. Currently, he's trying to, he's going to play with the Seahawks uh, coming up this year. All right, so, Carlos, a 3-2 game here. The Chicago Bears' first-round pick in 2013 and 14. The top draft picks had the same first name. What was that first name? Was it A, oh Kevin, God. B, Mitchell, C, Leonard, or D, Kyle? Kyle? I, I mean, 
Yes! Oh, wow! Is that a, that, oh, was that the best? Oh, oh, yeah. he was, Black at that! Black at that! <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, uh, uh, Dad! I think he was just up there hacking. He was swinging. He didn't. Yeah, he was. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. I guess, and I connected. Was, I guess. Uh, well, you you certainly did it. Hit it out of the park. Kyle Long uh, drafted in 2013, and then Kyle Fuller in uh, in 2014. Wow! Are you guys are doing all right. So it's a three-three. I got the uh, I got the homemade scoreboard here just in case. Uh, you know, the old-time scoreboard. It's a three-three game. So we've gone through uh, three innings. Coming up, the question get a little tougher. They're going to be worth uh, two runs. We're just getting cranked up with Dan Plesak, Carlos Pena. I'm your host, Chris Myers. Play at home, Marquee Sports Network. We'll continue in a moment. Taylor McGregor, let's say hi to her. She has a special question for those of you playing along at home. Thank you, Chris. It's now time for all of the fans at home to get a gold glove question of their own. So we want to know, last season, who was the lone Chicago Cub to win a gold glove? Go to www.marqueesportsnetwork.com for the answer. Join us each week for the Off the Mound with Ryan Dempster podcast presented by Sloan. Don't miss the in-depth conversations with some of the biggest names in baseball, plus celebrities, musicians, and more. You think you know uh, what a manager uh, goes through as a player, but you have no idea until you actually go through some of those conversations or decisions and the kind of ups and downs of the season. Download and subscribe to the Off the Mound with Ryan Dempster podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And it's all presented by our good friends at Sloan. When you run a business in Chicago, you have to be ready to put in the hours, put in the work, brave the elements. Running a business here comes with ups and downs. The downs make you tougher. The ups keep you pushing. At Wintrust, we know what that's like because we started here too with one small location and have found a way forward. No one knows how to support a Chicago business like another. From us to you, keep going. We've got your back. Jessica, we need to leave right now. I need to get something. Dance recitals are so boring. There's a me no one knows. Wait until we say So free. what's the empty suitcase for? The grand prize trophy. Duh. Confidence. Pass it on. I was born to be somebody. I could hear the thunder. I knew I knew that we were getting a storm but just suddenly the hail started coming down. It literally sounds like rocks are hitting the side of your house. When I talked to Hippo, my first call, I felt immediately like they cared about my home like they cared about their own home. They were really concerned about every detail, down to did my grill have a dent in it? I had a lot of questions about how the process would go. They um, spoke my language. They didn't talk a bunch of insurance speak. Once I talked to Hippo, I felt a lot better. They made me feel that they were on top of it. Hope you're enjoying Play at Home Trivia, presented by Miller Lite. Glad to have you watching Marquee Sports Network as we continue through three innings. It's a tie game. And by the way, our old scoreboard, just to make sure, and we'll be updating this throughout, uh, Carlos Pena, Dan Plesak in a 3-3 game. And right now, as we say hi to both of you once again, the category, these are going to be worth two runs each. So far, you guys are batting 1,000. The category, it's a kind of pop culture feature film moments feature fan film moments from wrigley field here in a tie game dan which one of these chicago-based films does not have does not have a memorable catch from a fan or interaction at wrigley field a ferris bueller's day off b the breakup c high fidelity or d rookie of the year wow um you're getting into a bad <laughs> genre for me, Chris. Once you get out of 1980s and 1990s Major League Baseball, you're looking at a, I, I would say, um, oh my gosh. Oh, I, I can repeat it. So it's Ferris Bueller's Day. Here you go. Fer, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the breakup, high fidelity rookie of the year. It did not have a fan catch or interaction at Wrigley Field. I, I, That's kind of the key. There. I know this is yeah. probably, I, I'm just going with the lead in, rookie of the year, but I, I don't. I'm going to go rookie of the year. Yeah. All right, your first miss of the night was uh, high fidelity. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Long, yeah. Uh, yeah, remember a long, yeah, long time Cubs fan 
John Cusack uh, star in that. It does not feature a memorable moment filmed inside Wrigley Field, although that's Chicago. Thing. Well, your first miss of the day. So, Carlos, this is your chance to take the lead here in the fourth inning. Remember, these are worth two runs. That's why they're a little tougher. Uh, so, Carlos, in which movie does Cub fan and actor Jim Belushi make an amazing catch on a Mark Grace home run in a World Series? Is it A, Blues Brothers, B, Taking Care of Business, C, A League of Their Own, or D, Curly Sue? <laughs> Damn, oh, I, you guys are struggling. I'm struggling. No, wow. I'm struggling too, yeah. This is not a good – I have to say the Blues Brothers. The Blues Brothers? Uh, awesome. No, that's incorrect. It, it was uh, it was it was a great movie. But taking care of business, this was 1990. Belushi plays a convict <laughs> who escapes from prison <laughs> to see the Cubs in a world in a World Series. If you and that was make believe. Of course, in 2016 we had we had the real uh, World Series for the Cubs, and then Belushi didn't go to prison. We need to watch right, it. So Chris, still, we need to watch it. Yeah. yeah, you'll enjoy that one. All right, fifth inning here, still worth two runs. Bill Murray, feature films. We know the great Cub fan. All right, here we go. Which of these, uh, Dan, for you, which of these sports-based films does not star Bill Murray? A, Caddyshack, B, Space Jam, C, Slapshot, or D, Kingpin? Does not. Does, does not. not. <laughs> right. I, I know he's into golf. Caddyshack, I know. That's a no. I'm going to go Kingpin. That, I don't and uh, that is oh incorrect. It was t- it was Slapshot. He, remember in Kingpin, he's got yeah. the bad hair as a bowler, yeah, right? But that's Slapshot, the hockey. Yeah. right? With Paul Newman was in that in 1977. Yeah. All right, yeah. so we're, we're we're still we're still tied. Yeah. You, uh, you guys, getting tired. you guys are all baseball. Oh, yeah, <laughs> here we go. I'm telling you, I, I have five outs in me. Five outs. You're stretching me too far right now. <laughs> but but you're still in the game because Carlos hasn't been able to hit, take advantage. So, so here we go, Carlos. In what iconic movie, remember where these are two, does legendary Cubs fan Bill Murray play the character Carl Spackler? Is it A, Groundhog Day, B, Ghostbusters, C, Lost in Translation, or D, Caddyshack? You know what's funny? I, I love all four of those movies, and I do not know the, the characters, you know, the main characters' names at all. But I would have to guess, um, Ground, Groundhog Day? No, that's incorrect. Uh, and, and by the way, that's what this, this show is right now feels like, Groundhog Day. We're just kidding. But, uh, the, the answer, Dan, you probably do. It was D. Caddyshack, right? Carl Spackler, that's the 1980s film where he plays the groundskeeper that chases the, the groundhog. So, all right, we're still big tied. You got a big hitter, Dalama. How about- <laughs> we're going to move along here. Home run chase cameos. Here we go. Tie game. In, in what 2001 baseball film does Sammy Sosa play himself? A, Rookie of the Year, B, Hardball, C, Major League, or D, Angel in the Outfield? Angel in the Outfield. And uh, what uh, that is incorrect. Uh, the answer is B, hard, <laughs> Hardball. Remember, in two, that, that was the one with Keanu Reeves in 2001. He's the coach of the Cabrini uh, Greenhousing Project, a uh, Little League team in Chicago. And uh, I'm going to so, tell you hey, what right uh, now. Siskel and Ebert would be very disappointed in me right now. That's all I can all tell right. you. Well, it, it's a little baseball. It's a little uh, pop culture. All right, so Sammy. Carlos, we're still tied. Sammy is disappointed. <laughs> Sammy is. Well, yeah, you're right, right. A guy hits right three seasons of 60 homers or more, and you can't remember the movie he's in. So here we go. Uh, Carlos, you can take the lead on this in a 3-3 game worth two runs. And what beloved TV show does Mark McGuire portray himself with the phrase, do you want to see me sock a few dingers? A, Family Matters. <laughs> B, Full House. C, The Simpsons. Or D, Married with Children. McGuire. Number one, that, that, that is an, a hilarious line, by the way. And it has to be Married with Children. <laughs> I used to watch that show uh, Married with Children. Uh, no, that's incorrect. It was uh, it was the Simpsons. Oh Sorry, that's the yeah. He, 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 yeah, he voices <laughs> himself. Uh, the, the the seventy home first seventy homer guy, Mark McGuire. All right, so we've we've wrapped up six innings where the questions got tougher. You guys couldn't score, but that's okay because we still have a competitive game. So when we continue with Dan Plesek and Carlos being a time to get away from multiple choice, and we're going to have a chance, you'll each have a chance to pick up more runs. You can steal from the other guy, and then you'll also be on the clock before our walk-off question. Stay tuned. Play at Home Trivia continues on Marquee Sports Network.
me just to let me down. Let, let me, me down. down. And mess me around. Because it works the most. If you ride, you get it. Geico Motorcycle. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Are you 65 years or older? So are we. Over 80 years right here in Illinois. That's why a Medicare plan from Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois is the one to trust. Go with experience. Go with confidence. Through it all. Walk with us. Talk with us. Fight with us. Celebrate Black History Month with the Dovetail Project. Better fathers, brighter futures. Play at Home Trivia, presented by Miller Lite on Marquee Sports Network. we got a good one. It's 3-3 as we go to the seventh inning. The multiple choice answers are over. It gets a little bit tougher as we check the old-time scoreboard with Dan and Carlos. And you can see they got out to a fast start. The middle inning's a little bit of trouble. So uh, the next... Here's what we're going to do, you guys. Uh, the final three innings of the game in the seventh here, it's just generic style sports trivia question. No multiple choice option. But if you miss the answer, your opponent has the opportunity to steal the two runs for themselves. And then they could get their own question. But what we make fun about this, uh, Dan and Carlos, is it's a question about yourself, your own major league career. Because you guys both played and played for a long time and, and uh, really put your heart and soul into it. So it's a 3-3 game. Dan, this is worth two runs here to start the seventh inning. Break the tie. What former Cubs player did you face the most in your major league career? Former Cub you faced the most. Kind of a trick question, but Chris, I think I know who this is. I'm going to say Fred McGriff. Faced him early yes. on in Toronto. And I got a great story about the crime dog. He hit two <laughs> home runs off me. One was in Wrigley when he was pitching, playing for the Atlanta Braves. Wind was blowing in. I'm not kidding you. 25 miles an hour from left field. He had a screaming line drive over the basket into the stands. And it was my first glimpse of a ball being thrown back on the field, Chris. So <laughs> I give up the bomb. I'm disappointed. My head's down. I hear the crowd roaring and I see a ball come flying back in. Went over Sean Dunstan's head. It rolled to the mound. I picked it up. They kept the real ball and they threw back a rubber coated ball. <laughs> That's great. And you got it right. Uh, you, so you faced him 39 times. And uh, the next guy on the list was Wally Joyner. Um, so it, it was eight more times you faced McGriff. So that what's important, though, Dan, in this head to head competition here, you have a 5 3 lead. So now, Carlos, a question about your career to get the tie here worth a couple of runs. So, what pitcher did you homer off the most in your career? What do you think, Carlos? Do you know All this right, one? I, hey. Okay. Look, he's Come sweating, on. Dan. You got him sweating after that. Uh, two well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my water, my towel. Look, it has to be. It has to be either um, Pettit or Lester. I I'll go with Lester. That's correct. Wow, very good. And, yeah. and, and Pettit. Boom. Hey, Pettit was second on the list. This is the thing, though. Exactly, Dan. Like I. I don't know. I bear down against these like tough lefties. I mean, Lester, Pettit, these guys are studs, right? Um, I, I should have maybe taken, you know, fringe pitchers or number three, number four, number five, uh, five starters a little bit more seriously. I really, I really should have maybe, you know, maybe if I played against Hall of Famers all the time, I would have been a Hall of Famer myself. <laughs> Uh, you know, hey, 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 Dan, tell, tell Carlos he doesn't get extra credit for modesty. Okay, that just doesn't no, you don't know. No, no. <laughs> right now we're, we're all tied up heading into the eighth inning. Now it's getting into my territory, Chris. I'm finally getting warmed up. He's got the rubber arm. All right, so the eighth inning, this is a list category. And Carlos, since we're tied and Dan went first to start the game, you'll get the choice. You'll be on the clock here in 30 seconds. You, you, here's the category, though. It's not multiple choice. You're going to have to name for each one you name right. You'll pick up a run. So the categories are Cubs individual home run season or Cubs save leaders. So which one of those categories do you want to take? And whatever one you take, then we'll have uh, Dan gets the other one. <laughs> What do you think? Um, Saves leaders for Cubs or individual home run seasons for the Cubs? I, I'm, I'm going to go with the Placatas, man, the home run. Just the official question. Uh, there have been nine different Cub players, nine to hit at least 40 home runs in a season. Name as many as you can and go. Um, I'm going to have to go with Andre Dawson, um, George Bell, uh, Ernie Banks, Ron Santo, um, Derek Lee. Um, Aramis Ramirez, 
Alfonso Soriano. Um, Hank Ten seconds. Wilson. Hack Wilson. Hack Wilson. Um, Ron Five Santo. Seconds. Billy Williams. Uh, Moses Alou. Time George is Bell. up. <laughs> Time is up. What's Hold that? on. All that right. was a mess. I think I did. I don't know. What you got? No, uh, you did okay. I, we counted uh, six correct. Not is that what we Ooh, have? I, six correct. I, Glenn I, and I Hill. Didn't five. He didn't mention Sammy Sosa. Five? What? Yeah, he didn't mention How Sosa. How in the world did oh. I forget Sammy Sosa? That was the number one guy. He is. Hey, I did mention him in my mind. You didn't hear it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but right. yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, we didn't, the the, world world. Oh. That's okay. That when you're under pressure, you know, Dan. That's how the hitter. When they, but it, this is not a that's mental it. telepathy game. So here we go. So, so Dan, you're going to have a category. You'll be on the clock here, and you, for, again, for every one that you get correct, it'll be worth a run. And I'll start it when uh, I finish the question and say go. There are ten different pitchers to record at least forty saves in a Cubs uniform since. 1969 so at least 40 saves cubs uniforms since 69 when saves became an official stat so ready set and go dan i know one of them was randy myers in 93 because i played with him in 93. randy myers another guy um the shooter rod beck um lee smith bruce Suter. 10 seconds Carlos Marmo. Uh, Time's up. Uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah! Time's yeah! up. Oh, I, <laughs> Wade Davis. I, I, was, I had Wade Davis right on the tip of my mouth. I know that you forget. Uh, there was Mitch Williams, Kevin Gregg, right? We had Hector Rondon, Ryan Dempster, who's on marquee. So, that's how did he get there? Yeah! The easiest ones right in front of you, you miss. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like Lee horse. Smith and Savvy Sosa, right? You think the first, it's just, Come it's, on. that's, that's what's yeah. fun about. All right, so we're tied at 10. We've officially made sure of that. Uh, coming up, here's your walk-off topic here. This is the drama in a tie game. This is like a game at, at Wrigley. Uh, here's the topic. Think about this. The only Cubs player, and I'll set up the rule on this because going going into this year, the category, you're, you're, you're going to have, I'm going to ask you a question, and you're going to have to wager uh, your amount of runs that you have put on the answer, but the topic, I'm going to at least give you that. Only one Cubs player was accomplishing this historic feat. So that's that's the, the topic. How confident are you with this? Once again, only player to do something historic in a Cubs uniform. Get your wager in. We'll reveal the question, then your answer, and we'll ultimately get a winner in this competitive battle when play at home trivia with Dan Plesak, Carlos Pena, presented by Miller Lite, continues on Marquee Sports Network. I have, over my 30 years, seen many patients who have excessive sweating. It is very much a confidence killer. I recommend Carpe for my patients. Carpe is by far the most effective antiperspirant I've ever used. I love Carpe. Now I don't sweat. Effective and affordable. It's a game changer. Excessive sweating is not something you have to live with. Avoid expensive treatments, injections, and prescriptions. Your total body sweat solution is available at mycarpe.com. Visit today and get up to 30% off. Do you have concerns about mild memory loss related to aging? Prevagen is the number one pharmacist recommended memory support brand. You can find it in the vitamin aisle in stores everywhere. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. Little things can be a big deal, like our all new LiveWell app. One small icon on your smartphone with limitless health benefits, like appointment scheduling, managing health information, or finding a little calm in your busy day. Advocate Aurora Health, we're here for you. You're watching Marquee Sports Network. Welcome back to Play at Home Trivia presented by Miller Lite. We've reached the ninth inning in a tie game in our walk-off question between uh, Dan Plesak, Carlos Pena. It is a 10-10 game. It's that <laughs> close, but this will decide it. And before the break, I, I asked you guys the topic of our walk-off question relating to the only Cubs player to accomplish a historic feat. You were both responsible for writing down how many runs you were willing to wager on the topic. So let's take a look first at your wagers, and then I'll ask you the question, Dan, uh, and what did you wager on this? So it looks like, all right, three three runs in a tie game. And Carlos, you wagered just how confident they are. Nobody, let's see, it's, uh, it's uh, two runs. Why two? 
Ooh. real quick. <laughs> Well, let me tell you, when Dan goes out there in the golf course and he has a chance to go for the green instead of just laying up on the par fives, it doesn't matter if there's water, a lake, you know, a, a, a house on fire. He goes for the green. And I appreciate Ian, that about him. So I'm all I bet in. All right. that he was going to go higher. Yeah, he's all in. All right. 10-10 game. They in the switch hitting cup who became the only National League player to homer from both sides of the plate in the same inning. It was back in 2002. It's only been done three times historically, but only one Cub named the switch hitting Cub who became the only National League player to homer from both sides of the plate the same inning, 2002. And gentlemen, if you if you have your answers, Carlos, we'll go since you went with two. If you get it correct, you take the uh, the 12-10 oh lead. So what do you got? Uh, you hold up your sign for me or tell me the answer. This is this is dark. This is this is crazy. I don't even know if he was part of the ball club at that time, but. Look at that. Uh, no, that's a good guess, but it's incorrect. All right. He had, he, how about that? He went out. All right, so Dan, all right, so hold on. Let's see. You're, you're down to eight runs yes. now. Let's see what well, Dan's going to come up with. I feel really good about it. If was you he miss, a catcher? If you miss, you lose. Was he a catcher? I went with Todd Hunley. Uh, uh, incorrect. It, it, Mark Bellhorn yes. at Miller Park. Oh, yes. so, uh, at, yes. so, Wow. And I was already yes. yes. for my cup, man. I was ready. <laughs> uh, and he, he, I told you he, he was going to go for the for green. <laughs> yes, he, he, in a 10 10 tie, you gave up three runs. Carlos gives up two runs, so he hangs on for the one run victory. Bellhorn went deep. Right side of the plate off Andrew Lorraine, and then with two out, uh, he hit one from the left side off Jose Cabrera. That was back in 2002, August. Mark Bellhorn for the Cubs against the Brewers at Miller Park. Wow. All right. Well, congratulations. I, 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 Dan, I thought you were able to. Dan's arm got tired at the end. Carlos delivered. And he is. I know what hey, you're Dan, thinking, you're... Chris. There goes Dan. He blew another you were save. Strong. <laughs> well, I. I do want to oh, thank Carlos, arm, and, uh, and, and, and it was all about the it was all about the wager at the end, knowing knowing your game, uh, Carlos. During these unprecedented times, knowing my opponent's network, yes, and its partners, uh, <laughs> sure to impact local communities. For this episode, on behalf of you guys, Marquee Sports Network, Miller Lite, donating five hundred dollars to the Anthony Rizzo Family Foundation to help their donations of meals, masks, and sanitizers to local hospitals and cancer families across Illinois. Each episode, we have a different local charity that will receive a donation. All right, great fun. Uh, Carlos, your parting words. Dan, uh, Carlos. Hey, Dan. Uh, Chris, Dan, you left me in there Dan. for one too many hitters. <laughs> Dan, seven iron, seven iron, I laid up. You did exactly what I thought you were going to do. You went for the green and boop, in the water, brother. Yeah. Chris, Chris, I'm sorry. You're too old school, man. You got to start using the metrics. You left me in for one. Too many hitters. And you paid the price. Guess what? You just uh, got fired. <laughs> just my one, my one game as manager. If I had Seaver, I might have had a shot. All right. Uh, thanks for playing along. And for you two, uh, Miller Lite, Marquee Sports Network. Uh, for Carlos and Dan, I'm Chris Mars. Mar home to yours. We'll, we'll see you next time on Play at Home Trivia right here. <laughs>